Hey, what's going on? Um, we are both here. I'm here with um, introduce yourself there. I'm Honor Number Twenty Six. For those who know who I am. Um, I'll probably put the link down in the description. I'm sure we're putting this on both channels eventually. And we're going to be talking about Wrestle Kingdom 5. Um, what did you think of the show overall, Eric? I thought it was great, but you know, the biggest show of the year in Japan it needed a little more, in my opinion. That's just a little bit of a nitpick, even though it was still a great show. But maybe I thought it should be, might needed to go to the next level, but it did. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the card looked overly impressive going in. They definitely could have reconsidered their choice of TNA talent. You know, if TNA were willing to let their world champion go over there, I'm sure New Japan could have picked anyone they wanted. You know? I mean, having a TNA world championship match on the show probably makes the show seem like an international commodity, I guess, but the fans still didn't like it, so I don't think there was any reason not to bring over the best workers from TNA. That could have really put the show over the top, I think. Yeah, because I know the machine guns have experience in TNA. Uh, I know the Dudleys before they broke up, so that's probably why they didn't bring them over. But I think RVD was a great choice, especially the Dwayne Wilson on the Gano. I really didn't like that match, but we'll get into that. Yeah, um, I'd say it's just a solid show that won't waste your time, nothing more than that. I wouldn't act necessarily call it great. I just, I'd just i say it's definitely solid to good myself. Um, first match was for the IWGP Tag Team Championships. We have Bad Intentions versus Beer Money versus Muscle Orchestra. Um, go ahead. Um, I thought this was an okay opener. I mean, I, I kind of didn't like the finish at all. But, I mean, it makes sense with who won. Um, I, I mean, Beer Money did look pretty good here. I mean, I, I don't think they really fit the New Japan niche for whatever reason. I mean, I think Gen B would do fine here. I think the, the Machine Guns would do excellent. But Beer Money, I'm a little... I mean, I like them as a tag team, but I'm a little iffy on them being used to New Japan. Uh, Strongman of Minabu Nikonishi... I mean, when they, with what they did, they were very impressive. Like, I think Strongman... I don't even know his one of It's obviously not Strongman, but... Yeah, I think it was kind of hard to make it exciting because there was pretty much no chance that Bad Intentions were losing here. That's not to say that New Japan have not, nor will they ever again put the tag titles on a bear guy cockagen, but the crowd were not being into beer money at all kind of gave it away that they weren't going to win. And Nakanishi and Strongman, they're probably better as a team than they are on their own, but they're still not on the level of bad intentions. I say the match was still good, just kind of you want to be able to, susp to suspend your disbelief a little bit for a tag title match. Yeah, it was decent. Um, I thought of everybody, Carl Anderson looked by, by, far, by far the most impressive in this match. Yeah. But Strongman did do like the gorilla press on Giant Bernard, so that was impressive. But besides that, that not much is. Yeah, so I think we both uh, agree on this one. Um, two and three quarters, I have that as well. So um, we can move on to Road to Fantastica Mania. Um, Jushin Thunder Liger and Hector Garza versus La Sombra and Mascara Dorada. Um, this was fine, you know, you can kind of overlook the fact that it's just basically exhibition lucha and had no structure to it because that's kind of the point of bringing these guys in, just to show what they can do. And the crowd popped for it, so I think it served its purpose just fine. Yeah, it was a little spotty here and there, but I mean, with four guys like this, I mean, maybe not Lager, but the other three, you kind of expect that. Um, yeah. Besides, the, uh, besides that, the Sombra looked very good here. Let's go to Dorada. He looks okay, I mean, he definitely let, it, let La Sombra shine a little more here, I felt, and then in regards, I haven't seen them since this. I mean, I know they're wrestling in Mexico and stuff, but I haven't seen them since this little TNA run, so this was good to see him here. And then Liger is one of my favorites ever, so I, I definitely don't mind seeing him, so it's definitely a decent. Yeah, just a good representation of Lucha, I'd say. No, no problems with it. Yeah. Um, Deep Sleep to Lose, Hiroshi Tenzan versus Takashi Izuka. Well, before we do that, what did you uh, give the last match? Um, I only gave it two. I really just thought it was just kind of okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. I gave, I gave it two and three quarter. I mean, we'll watch that description box. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it, it's around the same level. So. Yeah. Um, Izuka and Tenzan. I didn't like this. I think this just kind of shows why Izuka is better off in six-man tags. You know, he can do his crazy act before the match, and he can bring out his iron glove at some point in the match. In this one, he has to remain interesting for the whole match, and that, I don't think he's very capable of doing that. I, I agree he's definitely stronger with other people around him. Um, I, I think it was a good storyline going in, but the match was different for that reason, but not that much different. I, mean, I think you'd have to be a little, at least a little bit invested in either of these guys to really appreciate that. That's just me. I agree with that a lot. 
And plus, we knew from the live report that RBD and Yano were going to be a hardcore match, so putting this kind of brawl match just before it didn't really serve any useful purpose, I don't think. I agree. I completely agree with that. Uh, I gave it two. I probably should lower it, but I, I felt for the reason. I probably have it at lower than that. Yeah, I, I have it at two only for the reason that you know it was different, and I liked the storyline going into it. But for a match wise, it wasn't that great. Yeah, I can see that. Um, New Japan versus TNA, Toru Yano versus Rob Van Dam. This was basically a match that could have been for the hardcore title in 2000. Um, which is fine. Um, my problem is, where are Yano's comedy spots? You know, why did they decide to get rid of those? I know that expectations weren't all that high, but throw in some comedy and this could have been a lot of fun. Like his matches with Tajiri. Yeah, I really did like that, especially because RVD was very, very over. You know, I mean, he was very clear of that. I mean, RVD has made a lot of Japan appearances. I have a DVD where he has a lot of appearances with his all Japan days, like young in his career, but you know, recently he hasn't been all that much. So, or at all. So, you know, it was really nice to see him here in Japan again. And Yano uh, is a good opponent for him. I, mean, I would have more liked to see him against Nakata. Thought that could have been good. But, uh, for what this was, I really didn't like it. Uh, a little bit of a predictable finish, in my opinion, but I still like that I needed three stars. Yeah, I think I really missed um, Yano's comedy spots. That kind of really didn't make it fun for me. But um, people weren't really expecting much, so I didn't. This didn't really offend me that much. Um, moving on to the first, I think, great thing on this show: um, Nagata versus Suzuki. I think you know, I really like this. This is just a perfect case to me of the good stuff is just so good that you can overlook the stuff they did badly. There's a whole section near the start where Suzuki is just walking over Nagas's leg. Doesn't lead to anything, but by the end you don't care because they're telling the story with their faces, not their arms and legs. So I really, really liked it. I really liked it as well. I mean, it's the it's the best match on the show, I think. I think it's the match tonight for me. I think um, it's, it's it's close kind of thing because there's, there's a couple of matches on this show that kind of are border between very good and great. But I don't think I think this was the one that I had just kind of no problems with whatsoever. Um, just really, really good stuff. Well, I, I kind of like the last three matches better than this for whatever reason, and I like the next match better than this, but, you, you know, it was definitely a good match, something went out worth going out of your way to see, but, you know, I, I feel like it could have gone a little longer, uh, a little bit of a better, I mean, the story coming here was excellent, uh, I was, it was not knocked, but, uh, a little bit of the entering was kind of lacking, in my opinion, I mean, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of an Oro Suzuki, so I really didn't like him in the match, uh, I love the God of it, so, it was just okay. Uh, I mean, it was, it was good, but it could have gone a little better. All right. Um, moving on to the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match, um, Prince Devitt defending against Kota Ibushi. Uh, you know, give these both give both these guys credit. I think they did a very good job getting an unmotivated crowd hot for this, especially down the finishing stretch. Um, but to kind of, I think the the juniors matches need a great crowd from beginning to end to kind of put them over the top, and they just kind of had to work very hard to get them into it. Um, they were succeeded, but it just kind of took a while. I'll agree with that, but this is my match of the night, actually. Um, I felt that, you know, these two have amazing chemistry in other matches last year, the tag team encounters they had, you know, and I, I wanted something special here we really didn't get for the amazing classic level at all. But I still thought it was very, very good, uh, even to great. Um, uh, I definitely, I mean, it's my match of the year at this point in the year, like, how little I've seen 2011 stuff with TNA not putting on that great on the pay-per-view, but, you know, this is still a, a great match in my opinion. Uh, Devi definitely looked like a, like a star here. He looked very, very good. Abushi, you know, he's, he's definitely one of the most recognized guys who was a regular for New Japan who holds one of their titles. So I, I really did like him, but i I'll definitely give the point to the crowd really wasn't in it for a lot of the match. Uh, but the points they were in it, they were very good, but when they weren't in it, they weren't good at all. So I think I'd still give it four and a quarter, though. I really, really like the ending in the match. Yeah, this is closer to great than Devitt and Omega was for me. I still can't call it great because I don't think this is nearly as much fun as Golden Lovers versus Apollo 55. But, you know, everything made sense. Some of the some of Ibushi's more impressive moves were used to put him in control, and then Devitt came back with some good stuff. So um, definitely very, very good stuff, I thought. Um, no problems with it, really. Just kind of the crowd kind of brought it down, I think. Um, Okay, so um, New Japan versus Noah, Battle Combustion 1, um, Hiroki Goto and Katsuchika Okada versus Takashi Segura and Yoshihiro Takayama. 
I don't even think it was because of time, because this match doesn't waste any time it has, but there's not enough struggle for Okada to tag in Goto, and Goto's hot tag, I'm sorry, I know you're a big fan of Goto, but it has no intensity behind it, you know, and there really doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to be a lot of meaning behind Okada being able to slam Takayama all those times. Those are the things that kind of really brought this match down for me. Um, I know I'm a huge fan of Goto, but I completely agree with you on that. Um, you know, I thought Goto should have been had a better person in this car to begin with. But the worry was it was kind of useless. You know, you, if you want to set this guy up to be your next big thing, no pun intended about Lesnar, but if you want to set him up to be the guy that's going to probably beat Tanahashi as the 57, uh, sorry for the spoiler, but it'd be the, the, a lot of people know by now, but, you know, if you're going to set him up to be that guy, you know, he needs much better representation on the biggest show in Japan of the year. You know, him and Segura have amazing chemistry. You can tell from the match last year, Russell King, you know, Takayama, I would imagine, have good chemistry. So, I mean, I know this match was kind of more about Okada and the Noah guys, but, you know, good was an afterthought. And, you know, I don't like that being such a huge fan of his. Uh, but, I mean, for what it was, it was, I think it was okay. I mean, it could have gotten a better rating if it used Godo and Segura a little more. But for what it was, it was just okay. okay. I mean, I still thought it was good. I mean, the finishing stretch has some stuff that you're going to remember, but I would expect Okada to be better when he comes back again. That's just me. You don't really get to see a lot of him being who he is in this one, I don't think. I mean, he looks better than he did before. I'll tell you that. But I think he should be better than he is now when he comes back full time for New Japan. Yeah. And then, I think we get to the shits, um, TNA World Heavyweight Championship, Jeff Hardy defending against Tetsuya Naito. Um, one thing you take away from this show is that TNA looked so amateurish throughout the whole thing. You know, RBD in a filler match is fine, but beer money weren't over. Borash just terrible at announcing the juniors match. Um, he wasn't terrible on anything else, but he just kind of doesn't fit uh, in the New Japan show, I don't think. And the fact that the world champion doesn't deliver, I think, just kind of makes them look very amateurish you know even though I really don't see what the big deal is about Naito I mean I haven't really seen a standout match from him the fact that he did most of the work in this made it at least watchable so a credit goes to him for that um I mean I, I, I left no limit but I, I, I'm not sold on Naito I, I mean I really like this match with Tanahashi destruction but I mean I'm still waiting to see what the big deal about him you know getting a huge singles push would be and I don't think Hardy's the guy to bring it out of either of them, honestly. I mean, Hardy and Ring needs a guy who can push him. I mean, his, his overness was always because of his character and just not with him. But Matt Hardy, previously before he put on a lot of weight, now he's the NA, but he... I just think Jeff Hardy needs a guy like... I mean, maybe if they didn't go to versus Hardy, I mean, maybe that would have worked. And put, you know, Naito with Okada. Maybe that would have been a little bit of a better fit. But, you know, this match was... Uh, was hard to sit through. I mean, Naito made it at least watchable. I completely agree with that point. I completely agree with the Jeremy Borash thing as well. You know, that this match was the first match on the show. Uh, at least the Tendon thing, which has a similar rating, in my opinion. You know, just, that was that, that just had substance behind it. This was just this was just bland and stupid. Yeah, thumbs down to Hardy is all I'll say. Um, the second New Japan versus Noah match: um, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Go Shiozaki. Um, both their 2010 matches, you know, I thought they were both good, but as far as what I expect these guys could do together, they both kind of a little under-delivered. This match, you know, there was a point where I was ready to overlook the fact that Nakamura was kind of inconsistent with the leg selling, because about two-thirds into the match, Shiazagi just takes control. He does such a phenomenal job with the leadership that I was really getting into him, and the finishing stretch, you know, I don't mind it because it really didn't make Shiazaki look weak or anything, but it just kind of happens too fast. You know, Nakamura just kind of wins out of nowhere. That's kind of what brought this match down for me, because I was really into it when Shiozaki started being the leader here. Um, I thought, you know, this is better than those other matches in 2010, uh, to be honest. Um, I, mean, I know that's not saying much to those big fan of either of them, to be completely honest. I mean, I thought the 30 minutes I'm only drawing a little bit better, but, and I really didn't like their match from the August 22nd, so I know it has a name for Noah, but I can't remember it at the moment. Um, uh, but, this match just seemed a little more of a pace for me. Uh, I, I, like, certainly, I really did like as well. And then I, I thought maybe, you know, the led to Shia's like getting the win somehow with, you know, Nakamura not being able to hit the uh, Domaye or whatever it was. Um, but, you know, 
it was very consistent, but it still was a very entertaining match. I, I, I'm willing to move past that for this. I really, really like the size of that. Yeah, I mean, I would have rather to see Shiozaki win this one, but if you're going to have Nakamura win, just kind of have more struggle towards that. I, it just kind of seems like Shiozaki is in control, then all of a sudden Nakamura does a couple of moves and wins the match. That's kind of how I, thought, how I felt about it. Kind of what stops this from being great, in my opinion. Um, just, yeah. Um, close to great, it was almost going to be my favourite thing on the show, but I would still say it, three and three quarters for it. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Um, the next match, this shocked me to all hell. Um, Toki Makabe versus Masato Tanaka. You know, even though I liked their match from September last, it's not really the sort of match you, you want to see twice. You're really interested in the second time, you know, but they actually progressed some of the stuff from the last match that, that went unresolved, kind of, because, you know, the last match, Makabe wasn't really bringing it as the face. I think he did this time. I think, you know, the table spots meant something. The crowd were really into Makabe. You know, this surpassed any expectations I had for it. I agree with that. Um, I know Tanaka, I mean, especially with probably Tanaka's best opponent of all time in my cause. So, you know, I expected maybe to go in that direction. I mean, it, it sort of was like that, but not really, in my opinion. I mean, I know the table spots, you know, the power bomb type moves into them, but, you know, it, it, it kind of had a little bit more substance to it this time in their uh, match at the last September pay per view. Which, which I'll agree with. This is this is better, you know. I, I kind of expected this match to quiet down the crowd, or to get back into Kojima Tanahashi, but it wasn't the case at all. You know, the crowd was really into both matches. I felt, but you know, this was very good. Um, the spots actually meant something, which I really really liked. They up to everything, and then you know it was a very very good match. I liked. It. Yeah, I would actually really call this a great match. I'm kind of undecided. This was one of those matches that I was kind of border between very good and great, but I really, really liked it just because I was not expecting that much from it. So um, definitely a big thumbs up for that. Um, then we move on to the main event for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, Satoshi Kojima defending against Hiroshi Tanahashi. This match, you know, I reacted to it expect exactly how I expected to react because I really love the final from the G1. Um, I love that match so much, and I didn't think they could top it, and I, I don't think they did, to be honest, you know. You know, it had direction, don't get me wrong, because the limb work was there, but it wasn't really used to lead to anything overly interesting, you know. That's what their G1 match did really, really well. Um, I still liked it, you know. I really liked Tanahashi, so I definitely still liked it, but compared to their G1 match, I don't think this really shapes up at all. Um, I think this this match was kind of a worthy main event for Wrestle Kingdom, um, but I I know you're a little bit bigger on the G1 match than I am, but I still didn't think it reached that level. I mean, I, I think you I believe you gave that four and a half. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I really love that match. Yeah, I gave it four and a quarter, and I, you know I, the G1 match you know it summed up it, it set up Kojima perfectly. I love that about it. This match you know that match had a great finish. This one had a good finish. You know. I mean, there was so much in it that the enemy kind of actually seemed legit when he won the match. And I mean, I, I wish they could give Kojima a little bit of a longer reign because, uh, just, just because, you know, he uh, won the G1, he just had so much momentum. But I mean, I guess Tanahashi kind of it is his time. But, you know, as, as a match, this was very good to great. I mean, I, I give it four stars. I really, really liked it. Uh, the atmosphere around it really helps. I think it feels too important not to say it's a great match, even though I don't think the actual wrestling is great. Um, just because of the G1 match, I think this one just kind of seems lesser than it. Um, but it really does have a good big fight feel to it. I'll agree with that. Um, it, you know, that's one thing when New Japan is good at, it is very, very good at. But when it's not, it's it, it, it's a little intolerable. I, I don't like it when New Japan doesn't have this with their matches, even if it's the opener to anywhere on the card, especially in the main event, and I'm glad this match happened. I'm very glad it happened. So yeah. It was a very good end I think you would have rather to see Goto in this match, though. Honestly, I would have, but it would have been a little too predictable, in my opinion, if Goto had won the match against Tanahashi the last pay-per-view for him to win this match. So I'm glad I didn't really didn't know who was going to win going into this match, because uh, Goto, they're setting up for a while. If Goto had beaten Tanahashi, I, I, was, I would have, been, without a doubt, thought he was going to win this so I'm kind of glad he actually didn't win the one thing. Okay, so that was the show. Um, I still think it's just kind of a solid to good show. I'd probably give it maybe a 7.75 or maybe an 8.0. Again, there's a lot of matches, not a lot, but there's some matches on here that are border between very good and great um, that I'm probably going to change my mind on maybe after um, a little bit of rewatching. But I still don't think it'll waste your time. And for a show that this, that's this long, if it doesn't waste your time, then it's at least good, I'd say. 
one thing about Wrestle Kingdom is that it always has just an awesome feel to it. You know, just just it, it feels like it's a um, a legit event. Like the stage setup is always magnificent, and just like when you can see everybody in the crowd and the lights a little bit more up, it, it just looks awesome. Just the look of I mean, it's the Japanese WrestleMania. Yeah, and I'll agree with that. It, it has the look to it, um, and that and that bumped it up a little bit more for me. I gave the show an eight point two five. I really really liked it. Um, it's a solid show from top to bottom. Very good. Um, I could maybe call it great only because I felt that it, no match really went under my expectations. I mean, I kind of did expect Hardy to be a dud, but not that big of a dud. But you know, if, if Abushi and Devin maybe went a little longer or something in, in the middle, you know, but still very very good going out of your way to say I like it. Yeah, so um, that was our review, um, and I'm sure both of us will be um, talking to you all later. We'll see you later. Yeah.